Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Matt Kuhn, and I'm a public health veterinarian in the United States. I'm very excited to speak with you all today about how to take a One Health approach to rabies prevention. Now rabies is a virus that's spread by the saliva of infected animals, typically through their bite to either humans or other animals. Every year worldwide, over 29 million people receive treatment for potential rabies infection. Now while not all 29 million of these people may have truly been infected, because exposure that goes untreated can be nearly 100% fatal, anyone that believes they were exposed is always encouraged to receive treatment. Nonetheless, this 29 million people that are receiving uh, treatment for rabies really underscores the potential threat that it poses worldwide. And so how we go about trying to prevent rabies really is the epitome of what a One Health approach needs to be. So if you're not familiar, a One Health approach is considering human, veterinary, or domestic animal and wildlife factors when approaching a subject. So in the example of rabies, humans over 99% of the time are exposed from domestic dogs, but they can also be exposed from domestic cats. These dogs and cats can be exposed from wildlife because rabies can be endemic or naturally live in many mammals, including bats, raccoons, skunks, mongoose. And also these wild animals can then infect humans so really, there's, factors are all interconnected. And we have to be aware of all of them when we're trying to focus on prevention. So one of the first steps that we always take and think about taking is vaccination. Now you can start with canine vaccination because most of our exposure, again, 99% of humans is from dogs. Focusing on canine vaccination is really the most cost-effective strategy we have to preventing rabies. But we can go beyond just canine vaccination as well into wildlife vaccination. So I'm gonna use an example of where I'm from. This is a picture of the Eastern United States, specifically Michigan here, this state, we can see does not have the blue, which is raccoon rabies. However, the East Coast does. And the reason that it hasn't spread despite raccoons free, freely moving between these two areas is because the local government in this one narrow strip of land in between these two areas yearly puts out baits that have vaccines in them. And by doing this, they kind of create a cutoff zone to prevent rabies from moving across. So wildlife vaccination is one way we can very specifically use an, a, a vaccination approach to prevent the spread of rabies from one kind of species to another or one area to another. Additionally, we can use human vaccination. So typically this is very focused, um, for example, to veterinarians like myself, also to researchers or others that are at high risk, um, such as wildlife biologists maybe out in the field that are exposed to animals that may have rabies. We can also go about this by trying to reduce exposure. One of the main ways by doing this is by reducing feral dog populations. This can be done effectively through spay and neuter programs at the local level. But one other consideration and an interesting story is how again, One Health can play into this. In India and Pakistan in 2007, Research start, researchers started to notice a significant decline in vulture populations. This decline in vultures or the scavengers led to a lot of animal carcasses that usually would have been picked clean by these vultures to remain available, which caused a surge in the domestic dog population there. This caused an increase in the prevalence of rabies. It made it that much harder for the local governments to control rabies in their local areas. So again, we can't just think about humans or just about domesticated animals. We have to think about this from a whole One Health approach, including the wildlife populations around us. Another way to reduce exposure is by reducing dog bites. One of the best ways to do this is by education, especially for children, since they're the most likely to be bitten. So rabiesalliance.org has excellent resources for this. But we also need to consider educating the general public about how we can look at wildlife and understand which wildlife animals may be, have rabies or especially our farmers and ranchers to understand how their livestock uh, should, would be showing, showing symptoms of rabies and how they can protect themselves. Finally, I have a couple of resources here, uh, the World Health Organization and their fact sheet on rabies, as well as rabiesalliance.org, and a book here that I, um, I myself appreciate that kind of goes over the cultural history of rabies through time. Thank you.